Hey gang, Scott here. Quick tip for you in Lightroom about adding a soft a twilight kind of coloration and glow uh, to just a segment of your photo. Any kind of photo where you have uh, like a strip or a band across a certain segment like a mountain range or a cityscape and you want to give it this little twilight uh, kind of tweak to it. If you've watched my channel before, you've seen me do the twilight thing, which is with a few color curves and uh, then some masking. We get those two things together and we can have a look. So uh, let me show you how this is going to work uh, on this photo here. So this is one of those finishing touches, you know, just finishing up on the photo. And it's this last mask that I've done here. Let me just turn it off and on. You pay attention to you know, the, the mountain range, the ridges there before and then after, right? Before. Little, you know, it's nice. It's 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 a little little dull, and after it gets more of those magenta and pink tones. So uh, let's build this up from the ground up. How are we doing this? We'll create a new mask, and uh, to start with, uh, there's a couple of approaches. First, let me do it with with a radial, and I'll just drag the radial over kind of the area that I want to impact. And just to get started here, we'll do that. First, the the twilight look, right? First, we'll grab reds and we're going to nudge the reds up a little bit. I'll push it far so you can see what happens and then just a touch and kind of where, you know, take a look at your histogram. You know, what, what are the, the distribution of the, the red color channel in here? Figure out what makes sense. And I'm just kind of picking something between these two peaks. For green, somewhere around the center of that, we're going to pull it down toward magenta. Pull it really far. You can see what happens with these like tiny nudges. And then finally blue, I'll push that up toward the cooler colors, right away from yellow, adding more blue. So those three things, three things added up before and after you have that, that glow. And then you can shape the mask for a radial. And I'll actually zoom out because I want this to cover the whole range here. And I really like it to be, be flat across the bottom. So you can kind of stretch this out as far as you might be able to go to get this mostly flat and then potentially taper it off. But as you notice, I start to have troubles here. If I want to taper this off toward the sky a little differently than I want to do toward the water, I really can't do that with a radial. I've got the one control for feather or for the shape, and it starts to get, uh, I have to make this really, 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 really long to make it flat all across the bottom. So in some cases, you can get away with a radial, but the other technique is to use two gradients to a linear gradients. So let me, um, let's just call this one, this is the radial, okay? But we're gonna turn that one off and instead do it with a couple of linear gradients. So linear gradient, you know, where do I mostly want this, uh, this uh, amberish like this, uh, sorry, not amber, this twilight magenta purple glow, kind of down here, right? And maybe, maybe having it taper off about midway up the sky. And then we'll quickly do the same curve thing. I'll go and reverse this time. A little bit of blues, a little more magenta, and a little more red, right? And I push that one a little bit hard so we really can see what's going on before and after. Looking good for the sky, for those like wonderful color accents, the, the, you know, the sunlight hitting the, the, the ice capped mountains there. Don't like what's going on in the water. I'll subtract another linear gradient and just kind of do the same thing and drag that up, maybe like that. And I will feather it out some because, you know, in nature, if this type of glow were there, it would be, you know, bouncing and bleeding into the foreground somehow. Let's, uh, let's zoom back in a little bit more so we can see where that fade is happening. If I hover over that, you can see like that. But the sum total of the mask now is this kind of band across the, the middle uh, of, uh, not the middle, the lower, the lower portion of the photo, but eliminating things from the foreground. And I might even bring that up just a touch more. So when I look at the full add and subtract, we have a nice bleed there. And then the impact of that curve before and after. And I push the curve kind of hard. Finally, I have the master volume control here on the overall mask. You can dial that in to, to get that to be uh, you know, an overall nice accent pleasing look before and after 
like that. Uh, so those are two different ways you can target one of these twilight curve adjustments to your photo. If you can get away with the radial, great, one mask, one tool, and you're done. If you need to though, you've got the ability to do those adds and subtracts with all the different masks. Two linear gradients are gonna get you there. Hope you found the video useful. Questions, drop them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.